it has been five and a half months since the very first video in this series. N normally reorganizing my toy collection shouldn't take that long. At best, two months, something like that. I, I was anticipating it to be two months, uh, but yeah, I've really taken my time with this. Uh, and also, the year being what it was, a lot of things have been delayed, out of stock, oh, and also recording it for YouTube, planning and doing each section at a time has, has lengthened the process. But at the same time, the year 2020 being what it is, it's been nice to have a, a long-term project to focus on. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. And yeah, it's been a nice way to keep my sanity these last few months. This is the final video. We're in the home stretch. This one's taken a tiny bit longer to do than the normal. Uh, just trying to get things right, get things uh, all balanced out. So let's get into it, but let's go over some of the old sections from the previous videos because, as I said, five and a half months, that's a long time. So uh, a few things have updated in some of the sections during that time. In the very first video, it was to do with my Batman collection and expanding that out, giving its own section, setting up a couple of shelves, five months later, and... So, yeah, now there's a third shelf. It's not necessarily about more stuff, although there have been a few extra pieces added to this collection since that first video. It's been more about giving the pieces extra room to breathe. There are parts of my collection that are really, really crowded and I don't always like that. Uh, yeah, so I just added another bookcase. Now, the bookcase I've got here, it's sold out, basically. I can't find this specific style anymore because cheapest chips don't sell them anymore. Uh, and I was, I did have the foresight to buy a third one. But if you remember from the video game collectibles video, it was used for that section. And I thought, oh, you know what, let's bring it over here. I'll replace that with something else later. The funny thing was, I was actually buying a fourth one on Marketplace, uh, Facebook Marketplace. And I don't know, the woman said that someone else was, uh, was already on their way to collect it. But the, uh, the listing is still up. Uh, I don't know whether she forgot to take down the listing or she didn't want to sell to me which is a little messed up when you think about it. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's early in the video and I'm going on a rant already. Expanding the back collection has allowed me to give more space to all the different pieces. It's given them a little more breathing room. It's also future-proofed it, I guess. As you'll see here, the Batman 1966 collection has somewhat exploded since the last time. I was making a little more of an effort to look for uh, those specific toys. The Michael Keaton, Tim Burton era of Batman has also expanded to two different shelves. It's predominantly Batman 89 and Batman Returns. We've got the figures over there, we've got the vehicles over here. I've found a way to display the, the grapnel gun from Batman Returns. Again, more space, more room to breathe. Uh, it just looks a lot nicer instead of everything so crowded and squeezed in there. And that is especially the case for the Arkham section on the next row down. Yeah, trying to squeeze so many figures from three different games in onto two shelves. It was frustrating at one point because almost all of them don't have uh, figure bases and the NECA ones are far too large, as I've explained in the previous video. Yeah, to have them spaced out a little more. If one of them does knock up, get knocked over for it, whatever reason, fewer figures I have to pick up and, and reorganize again. And along the bottom, the Batman animated series uh, has had a substantial expansion. I'm now able to do vintage 90s figures as well as the more recent DC Direct, DC Collectibles figures. Oh, I found a, a vintage Batwing from the 90s, from 1993 if I remember. The eBay seller uh, that I won the auction from, they only live like five minutes away from me, so I saved on postage just by going to pick it up. I completely forgot, the major piece that has been added here since that first video is the Mondo 1-6 scale Mr. Freeze. Yeah, won him in an auction and yeah, he's a beautiful piece. Uh, Mr. Freeze is my favourite uh, Batman villain and yeah, just to have that version immortalised so well. 
I'm I'm in awe. Moving on. Red alert. All hands to battle stations. Engage. Ooh. It's warm tonight. So there have been a few uh, bits and pieces added to the Star Trek collection. For instance, the General Martok and Odo figures from Diamond Select. I got those as part of a, uh, a job lot, and having those in the collection allowed me to bring out the other Deep Space Nine figures from that same range, DS9 being one of my other favourite Star Trek shows. There have been two, I guess, major additions to the collection. Uh, one I haven't added yet, I'll, I'll, I will get to in this video. Uh, the other one is right here. The former owner of a costume shop was having a garage sale getting rid of some old stock that she had left over and I spotted in the photos of the marketplace listing that she had a few Star Trek costumes left over. So you know I took a punt as uh, hopefully they were still there and yeah sure enough she had them but they were probably two sizes too small for me. I do wish I went to that the actual closing down sale because there might have been uh, there might have been sizes large enough for me, but I decided to buy them anyway because they were only $5 each. Uh, they were of varying quality, let's let's be honest, well, mainly because they were 20 years old and this is the type of thing you rent, you, you hire out to people and they weren't going to be mint, let's say that. I decided to buy them as collector's pieces despite, you know, they're not screen news, they're not worn by any actors, they're, they're rental costumes. But they look so nice. I mean, look at look at it. It's really cool. These days you can buy some, you know, reasonable quality cosplays at a really good price. Back in the 90s, you really had to source these. Uh, you know, if you didn't know how to make it yourself, you really had to search. You really had to source these from overseas. Yeah, look, there's a few holes in the chest here from from the pins that were poked through for the for the com badge. I just used the quantum mechanics magnetic badge to, to put on here, but yeah. I just think it makes a really beautiful display piece. Oh, the other one. Oh, it's warm. Whew, you know what? I think I prefer this. So almost exactly a week after I recorded my Star Trek video, I found this. There was a seller on Gumtree getting rid of this box full of Diamond Select, yeah, mostly Diamond Select Star Trek starships. I'm a little lost for words because it was quite the deal. If you know anything about Adelaide, you know that it is such a small city that you're bound to bump into someone you know. In this case, the seller originally bought these from an estate sale. It was from the same estate sale I bought my Star Trek starships and other toys from during the same time. He beat me to these. And now and then he's selling them on for, look, I'm, I'm gonna guess for maybe slightly more, maybe the same price, I don't know. All I know is out of the dozen starships he had for sale, uh, you know, I, there was like two in here that I really wanted. I pretty much spent the equivalent of two of these starships, I guess. So I say that there was two that I was interested in. There was like, there's at least three, and one of them being this beautiful Diamond Select Enterprise D uh, from All Good Things, like the the uh, All Good Things alternate universe version with the extra nacelle and stuff. and. Oh, there's got all the stands, some of them broken, admittedly, but you know, I can I can fix that. Oh, wait a second. I'll get the one that I really wanted out. There's the Enterprise D. It's magnetic. Strong magnets as well, but yeah. Saucer section. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, wow. They are strong magnets. I've, I've got the Star Trek 6 Bird of, Klingon Bird of Prey up there, which I really like. However, this one, the HMS Bounty. This is the one that had the whales in it. It even has HMS Bounty written on the side there. So that's very cool. Oh, there's there's an Enterprise A. There's a refit class. Uh, there's two. There's also there's two Enterprise E's in here. There's a Playmates version, which I've always wanted to find. Uh, there's also the Diamond Select version, the second release 
with the nacelles light up. He also had these two. Uh, this is a Playmates Romulan Bird of Prey. It's a long story why they're the same names. The original owner, who has since passed, he was trying to make a... I don't know, he was trying to customise this uh, to have a, an external control box or something. I don't know, I, I may, I may you know, do something about that. But he also had the Star Destroyer trying to do the same thing. Yeah, uh, the guy I bought all this from, he just threw this one in there as well. It, it is kind of cool. I don't have... Oh, I, I have a Star Wars collection. Um, but it's not on display. I haven't made room for it. But I'm, I'm just... Look, honestly, I'm just really happy with getting all this. So not an awful lot to update on the uh, Transformers display. I have bought a few of the newer War for Cybertron uh, toys here and there. Ah, they're okay. Uh, I, I like some more than others. Look, I, I'm not a huge rah rah vintage G1 sort of uh, collector. Uh, I well, look, I like plenty of new stuff. It's just that I'm sort of underwhelmed by that Netflix series, it, and it's tainted everything else. Uh, from that range. There are a few bits and pieces. One of the Transformers I had as a kid was uh, the Pretender Splashdown and I found this incomplete one uh, for a, you know, a relatively decent price on eBay. Uh, yeah, the, the outer shell is missing all the all the pieces unfortunately but he does have, being delicate here, um, he does have the inner robot and uh, his accessories as well so yeah, I think the, the goal as far as the G1 stuff is to recreate my childhood collection. Uh, I think I more or less got most of them. Uh, I, I have to have a, a bit of an audit to, to figure out what I do have. I'm happy with this display for, for the time being. Uh, it's one of the more crowded shelves, as I mentioned before. I would prefer to have the entire bookcase dedicated to Transformers, but as you'll see later, I've had to dedicate some space to other stuff. But yeah, I'm still kind of pleased by this. God, I love being a turtle! With the Ninja Turtles toys, as far as the Playmates vintage ones are concerned, uh, that's holding fairly steady. It's, it's all good there. When it comes to the NECA toys, yeah, they keep coming in. And as of this recording, more are on the way. After missing out on the original run of them, I finally picked up two uh, foot soldiers, the bladed weapon and the melee weapon, uh, from a local retailer, uh, Collectible Chaos. I get uh, a club discount from them, so yay. Uh, I pre-ordered the foot soldier 2-pack as well with the extra uh, weapons rack. I, I pre-ordered that months ago. It was finally released in Australia two weeks ago. It was sent out to me getting closer to Christmas and with everything else going on it's now been delayed by a week and it's only supposed to come from interstate from uh, from Melbourne or Geelong sorry these things happen also I was anticipating uh, the Casey Jones and disguise Raphael 2 pack to actually be released around now uh, or at least the second wave of them I I got them sent out back in September and I only just finally opened them up. I'm fine with Casey Jones as a character. He, he's not my outright favourite. I, you know, but I do like him. However, I'm very impressed with that toy. And originally, they weren't able to get the likeness rights of Elias Cotius. He wouldn't, he wouldn't allow it. But ever since then, someone convinced him. And he has been in contact with NECA in order to arrange something. So if that means a new figure an alternate head to swap out maybe or maybe the likeness will be associated will be done for the quarter scale i don't know but i'm looking forward to it uh, apparently that his likeness is under there but it's glued on so you have to really pry it off even though this was released was it over a year ago i finally pulled the trigger on getting casey jones's mask i'm glad i paid as little as i did again from collectible chaos in paraka for the longest time i held off mainly because i kind of didn't need it for me it was all about the turtles i was contemplating getting a mannequin head for it but i didn't want to spend the extra cash so i just used a uh, toilet roll holder a 
big Halloween plastic skull covered in a black balaclava just to display it as is. I needed I needed this display to be simple, maybe a bit elegant. It it works. I like I like how it works here. I've added the Ninja Turtles VHS tapes, X rental cases here. I've got a few copies of <laughs> each of those films. <laughs> Still on the way, we have Nin uh, the Foot Soldier 2 pack, which I mentioned before. Toka and Raza have been sent uh, by NECA. I, I ordered directly from their website. That was sent out about a week ago, so after the balls up with Aussie retailers, which I still don't know the full story about, I had to order my Super Shredder from a UK retailer, and apparently that's out at the, uh, the end of the month, so that's They'll probably be here <laughs> end of January or something like that. And then next year, we've got the April O'Neil figure. And that's been, uh, that's got the blessing of Judith Hogue as well. And she wants to document the making of From Go to Woe on that one. So, oh, so looking forward to that. For the few of you that actually did watch this video, um... This one might have had the most upheaval since that that video was published. Yeah, I've I've gotten stuff out of out of storage. I've actually rearranged the shelf down here for whatever reason. I after shifting it in a meter across from where it was, I didn't bother to organize anything. And uh, now that I've got levels throughout there, I've also thinned it out a little, given a, a, a bit more breathing room. One of the new pieces here is this commemorative. Metal Slammer. Uh, it is from 19... Yeah, it's from 1992 when the first game came out. With the Gears of War stuff, uh, yeah, I keep finding bits and pieces here and there. Oh, I finally have the complete quartet of Delta Squad. I've got Marcus. Uh, I've got quite a few Marcus figures, actually, because he's so easy to find and people keep throwing him out anyway. Uh, I've got Coltrane. He was uh, like a $10 savers purchase. I also found Dom and Baird uh, from the uh, October Adelaide Comic and Toy Fair, complete with accessories as well, so I'm very pleased, very pleased with that. Oh yeah, the Halo shelf got a massive overhaul, a lot more space, more levels so, so you can see everything. Someone found this uh, McFarlane version of the Covenant Hunter. It, they bought it for me, basically. It was just very generous of them. They didn't have to do that. I was already rushing. I was already rushing to that savers, but they bought it for me because they saw the vultures circling. And so, yeah, very grateful for that one. I've also been buying the Halo Infinite uh, figures by Jazzwares that have been released recently as of this recording. Uh, Big W had a massive introductory sale, so I think it was at least 25-30% off those figures. This is from the Spartan collection, the 6-inch collection, which is their version of the Black Series or Halo Legend, or, or Marvel Legend, sorry. And um, yeah, it's all right. I like it. Clean lines, decent enough detail for the price. And uh, look, it's, I'm going to say it now, it makes some, you know, fairly decent cosplay reference, so... That'll probably be happening. The biggest change would have to be that corner shelf right there. As I said before, the shelf that I did decide to put here is now in the Batman section, so I needed to find a replacement. Couldn't buy one, so I decided to make my own. Uh, slightly pricier, but at the end of the day, making two of them... It <laughs> actually, actually means I kept the cost kind of low. It wasn't going to be exactly the same. I, again, had to keep costs low. And it sort of emulates the look that I was after. Might be a little wobblier than, uh, than I was hoping, but <laughs> it's all there. We've still got the Arkham stuff up top. The second shelf now is, is what I'm calling the Capcom shelf. So I've got the Resident Evil stuff. I'm hoping to get some more Resident Evil remake stuff. The Street Fighter, I think there might be Street Fighter 4 figures. I don't know if they're actual NECA figures. I think they might be bootlegs. However, I I only paid like $10 or $12 from at, for, for the bag of them at Sabres. They look cool, so they're there. I used to love Street Fighter. It was between Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat back in the day, and I was more of a Mortal Kombat fan. I really enjoyed Street Fighter as well. Occasionally, I will find the G.I. Joe Street Fighter figures. So two of them I've actually found either from Savers or at Markets, but a friend actually gave me the Ken figure there as part of a, a, 
a bag full of G.I. Joe-sized figures. Uh, the Sonic shelf has expanded a little bit. The plush toy there. I've got more plush toys in storage. Recently, Jazzwares released a range of Sonic toys. Apparently, they were released earlier in the year in the US, but they only just made it in the last month here in Australia. So you've got Sonic, you've got Tails, you've got Robotnik. I couldn't be bothered with Shadow because I think that was after my time. But there's also a Green Hill Zone playset. And I whipped that up from Target rather quickly as well. It was like 30 bucks or something, $29. You know, I'm not a, I'm not necessarily a mint in box sort of person, but I'll get to it. I'll, um, you know, sometimes with these toys, I, I find a second one loose somewhere for, for absolute cheap. And, uh, you know, I'll have that one out in one box. And on top of the light box, I've got the Gears of War 5 store display. Oh, absolutely love Gears of War 5. I thought it was a great game. Kate okay, Diaz is a fantastic character, fantastic protagonist to take over. I went into one of the game stores on a Thursday night and right next to the counter was just a whole bunch of store displays um, ready for the bin. Saw that on top of the pile and I said, mate, uh, is that about to be thrown out? How much do you want for it? And the guy said, just take it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really, really happy with how this corner of the display is looking. Are you Tony Stank? Yes, this is this is Tony Stank. You're in the right place. Thank you for that. So not a whole lot of movement on the Marvel front. I'm still in search of random Marvel Legends figures, some that are eluding me. One I got a refund on because they the retailer sold it off because they ignored my order for like two weeks. So I got a refund on that one. But uh, I have a couple of additions on the bottom shelf here. Uh, I, I think I... Did I mention last time that I was of two minds of whether or not I would start collecting X-Men animated series? Uh, I, I'm still deciding on that one. It's more of a, you know, if I find them sort of scenario. Uh, the one I did hunt down was the more recent Jean Grey from that... Uh, Oh, I hate the name of it. The Love Triangle 3-pack. Yeah, that was going for cheap, so I thought I'd, I'd pick that up. I'd scoop that one up before someone else did. Which led me to bring out my Toy Biz Cyclops and Toy Biz Beast that I found previously at Savers. I also finally pulled the trigger on the Marvel Legends Stan Lee figure. He's available everywhere. You know, he's not limited or anything like that. The fact there's a... Uh, his signature on the box doesn't really mean much, considering Stan allegedly would sign anything, right? He, he apparently would sign absolutely anything because, in his mind, he didn't want his autograph to be valuable. So, keep that in mind, all you people who are trying to make a profit off of, you know, a dead man's signature. Uh, I, I, uh, I had a voucher for Mighty Ape, who already had this figure on discount. But yeah, it's actually a really... Really cool, very nicely detailed little figure too. I'm hoping to get the Marvel Legends Stormbreaker, because I just think that's kind of cool. Uh, next year, the Falcon and Winter Soldier Shield. As much as I'd like to get the standard shield, or the 75th anniversary metal shield, that's a little bit pricey. I, I don't think I can justify that cost. Right now, I've got the... Um, the crappy costume store five dollar uh, shield hanging up the back there as a bit of a backdrop yeah it's coming along nicely righty um i think we've got all the old stuff out of the way uh it's now time to move on to the things i didn't cover in the previous videos and that begins with the room itself this is the good lounge room Every immigrant home has one. Uh, it's the special room with the fancy decor and the fancy furniture that you're not meant to sit on. Uh, it's reserved for guests, really. Uh, special guests. Guests who are so special indeed, uh, they don't exist. Also, based on which cultural background your family is from, uh, kind of determines whether or not the plastic is still on the fancy furniture. Either way, no one's sitting on it. So after many years of it not being used for anything, uh, I started sort of creeping into here. I'd occasionally uh, dump my cosplays in here, for instance. In the lead up to a con, uh, after a con, I'd unload here. 
it was more like a, a bit of an anteroom uh, before things went back into storage or went, you know, being tetris and loaded into the car. And at one point it became the uh, sorting room for the toys that I was going to take to sell at the uh, toy fair. And then moved into here, took, took over this room. So this good lounge room also has a bar, which explains why this section is arranged as it is. I can't remove the bar, so the bar has been utilised. And uh, because of that bar setup, the very first thing you're confronted by as you walk through the really creaky doors uh, are these big fellas right here. I say over and over and over again how much I love quarter scale figures. They're ostensibly just big action figures and I love that about them. I, I just love the detail. I love the cost versus detail accuracy fidelity ratio. Most of these are bargains anyway. They're all gathered here because there's not enough of that particular franchise I guess to make their own shelf. So here we have the uh, quarter scale, I guess you could say action hero display. Starting at the top there we've got the uh, comic book heroes. We've got uh, Ron Perlman's version of Hellboy up there. Uh, that one is the Mezco toy one. Uh, and we've also got Gal Gadot's uh, Wonder Woman as well. On the next level down is the Predator setup. Uh, we've got Dutch here and uh, we've got the Predator there as well. I absolutely love that Predator figure. It's the LED version as well. And wow, that was... That... <laughs> when you score bargains like that, it really does feed into the whole... <gasps> what else can I get at that price? You know, that, that sort of thing. Apparently there was something wrong with it, but I, for the life of me, I can't tell what. Uh, but it is just an amazing figure. And then on the next level down, we've got Bruce Lee over here. He he was, you know, mere peanuts. He was broken uh, and uh, won that auction, repaired him pretty much as good as new. In the middle, we've got the T-800. He was a... <laughs> he was a very early morning pickup. Uh, 6.30 in the morning, actually, from a 24-hour pawn shop. And I saw this advertised on Gumtree. Uh, and I thought to myself, you know what, I can't, they're open at 10 at night, I could go then, or I could just wait till the next morning. And uh, yeah, I was on my way to vote in the federal election that year. Complete, still with the box, he was only $60. And the fact that he's not the same exact sculpt, he's not a recycled head sculpt of Dutch, kind of says so much about the fidelity uh, that uh, Necker put into these figures. Over the other side uh, is the quarter scale Robocop. It's one of those motion activated ones. There you go. I absolutely love Robocop. <laughs> like so many kids in the 80s, it was one of those films you weren't meant to watch at that age. But yeah, he was he was really broken. I will say I think I paid too much for a broken one. It was it was cheap considering, but oh, I think if you go back to a pre, uh, an older video, I actually talk about that Gumtree seller. But, you know, I repaired him. He's he's as good as new as far as I'm concerned. Oh, below the uh, these figures here is uh, another set of shelves. I put a cube unit under here. Uh, you know, set up all the uh, Robocop toys underneath there, and it still fascinates me to this day how the 80s tried to churn out properties for kids that were originally meant as you know for adults, hard R-rated movies, and you turn them into cartoon shows, and uh, it it still kind of boggles my mind, but. But yeah, we've got some NECA toy uh, figures down there, both Robocop 1, uh, 2 and 3. Of course, we've got the, the electronic talking ED209, which I think is bloody fantastic. It's, it's quite the way to be greeted as you walk into this room, I think. Oh, and behind the door is my VHS collection. Uh, they used to be on the other side of the room, but now I found a spot right here. It feels temporary, but you know what? It's, it actually kind of works. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass! Back over on the main wall and the bottom half of the Transformers cabinet I left uh, free mainly for these two collections. Uh, we've got Dino Riders up here and also the Ghostbusters. Now both these have been in the past more or less treated like afterthoughts. Whatever spare uh, bit of uh, shelf space I had they they kind of went there but I wanted to put a bit more extra effort into into their display this time around uh, admittedly the dino riders are still a they're still a bit of a work in progress uh, because I've got 
bits and pieces in storage I still need to get to. If you go back to a video at the beginning of 2020, you'll see that most of these Dino Riders are actually, they're actually from my childhood. I rediscovered them hidden under the, uh, the staircase. Uh, they'd been there for, oh, probably nearly 30 years or something like that. I'd since uh, thought they were long gone, uh, disposed of, like every other childhood toy I had. Uh, the T-Rex is actually bought, oh, a year ago now at one of the toy fairs. Uh, missing quite a few pieces and I'm going to be doing some something with that. But uh, my childhood T-Rex is somewhere else in the room right now, but I rediscovered that as well. So... That's still a work in progress, but for now, I'm sort of, well, I gotta admit, I'm not even sure if it's gonna remain here, so. This space for now will, is reserved for the Dino Riders. The Ghostbusters, on the other hand, I'm much happier with. In all honesty, I never had too many plans to collect Ghostbusters. Uh, I'd pick up pieces every now and then. Yeah, collecting Ghostbusters, I guess, really kicked off again a couple of years ago, at least. When I discovered the incomplete main body of a Kenner Ecto-1 at Savers for only $5. It took a while until I found all the pieces that it was missing, as well as some uh, repro labels. Doing all that for less than $40 was really, really satisfying. So I kept hunting for, for more Ghostbusters items. And last year, stumbled across a, an auction in the UK uh, for, the, uh, for the firehouse. That was only about $40, $50, if I recall correctly. Only missing one piece. I'd never seen the firehouse as a kid. This is probably the first time I'd ever seen it in, in person. I had a small selection of Ghostbusters toys as a kid. I had the four original figures. Uh, I had the Ecto-2, which is the, uh, the helicopter, which I've since reacquired. I had the Marshmallow Man, uh, which again, also I've reacquired for cheap. I also had the blaster that projects the ghostly images. I've since reacquired the uh, the projector, but the only piece from that original one, and I say that because as a kid, I was the type of kid that took things apart to find out how they worked. So the only piece from that uh, projector, blaster, whatever it was called, it actually remains in this collection somewhere. It's propping up something else, so I've got that one piece left. Oh, interestingly enough, this version of Peter Venkman is possibly the only original Ghostbusters toy that I still have in my possession. I had a heap of these um, alternate versions. Uh, some of them I've reacquired as well. I used to really like how these worked. I, I've even got... At, and I had them as a kid as well. I've even got the Filmation Ghostbusters just hidden away back there. I will admit, I do not recall how I watched the two different cartoons. The uh, the real Ghostbusters, as the that cartoon was called. And then there was Ghostbusters. Two words, based on the Filmation uh, comedy. As a kid, I do not remember how I tried to... How to delineate or pass the two different shows. I just enjoyed them. So I reacquired these figures over the years as well. This is one of those uh, Ruby's props. You know, I used to trash Ruby's a lot. Their products got better over time. And when you could put them up against how much they actually just charge for them, it, it's, it's a nice compromise. So, yeah. I mean, that's pretty nice. I gotta admit. <laughs> I'm glad to have that as well. It's just sitting here. The Ghostbusters shelf might remain as is. You know, a Dino Ride is such an expensive... Um, they're such expensive toys these days. I, I, there is no way I can justify hunting <laughs> more of them down. This is pretty much probably going to be it. But like I said, I have to go into storage to find the few remaining ones I have left, as well as the bits and pieces. I will probably do a separate video uh, early next year about about that. This is the first time either of these have been uh, featured in such a manner. The majority of the display cabinets in this room are flat pack. I love flat pack. I find it meditative. Uh, but this one here is one of the few uh, dis one of the few cabinets I had to build from scratch uh, and I skipped over it previously because at the time I hadn't decided what to put in here yet and I went over a few ideas. I eventually ended up 
with this, a, a bit of all the ideas, I guess. At one point I was thinking maybe it should be for the one six scale stuff. And you know, that's mostly what it is. On this shelf right here, it's my tribute to uh, pro possibly one of the few animes that I actually enjoy, Appleseed. In particular, the more recent Appleseed uh, Alpha. And so I've got a few of the figures from, from that movie, uh, a couple of the play arts, I've also got the uh, Hot Toys Briarios. T Once upon a time, eBay did 30% off as a discount. Unbelievable. That's how I got that one. Amazingly, over the other side here, these are these are actually also Hot Toys, these tiny little figurines over here, uh, three and three quarter scale. I stumbled upon them at Savers, of all places. Kind of incredible, really. They were just being wheeled out on, on the stock trolley. And so there were these boxes, uh, some of them are opened, but uh, not quite all the way with the with the blister packing, some of them were loose. There was a bag hanging on the wall, which I think had been there for a couple of days, and I I recognized it, but it didn't click at first what it was. The E-SWAT landmate there, which is actually a builder figure. So you buy all the different figurines of the different characters, but the landmate was mostly assembled already. Yeah, I think I spent, if I remember, remember correctly, I think I spent, I spent less than $50. I'm rounding up here. I spent less than fifty dollars. They uh, a complete set actually goes for over a thousand dollars. Look, I'm missing Dunan. <laughs> I I really want Dunan to complete the 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 set here, but yeah, that was quite the massive score. And I it's, I mean it's Hot Toys for one thing, you know. But oh. one of the disappointments about the Hot Toys here is they made a Briarios from Alpha. But they didn't make a Dunan. Yeah, so that's a um, that's a current custom project that I'm working on at the moment, very slowly. <laughs> Back in March, I did start on it. You know, you, you're being told to stay home, so I thought, yeah, let's let's get started on some home projects, and I messed that up. Uh, had to order in more custom parts, and uh, you know, overseas deliveries weren't happening at the time, so that's been delayed, but that will happen. Going down a shelf, and we have the one six scale Ninja Turtles. These have been a recent completion. Uh, Leo, I bought a couple of years ago. Donnie was a year later. I've spoken about them in my previous videos for uh, the uh, favorite and frustrating purchases of the, their respective years. As I said, Mondo Toys, the shop around, get the cheapest price possible, which is what I did. As they go along, they do improve. You know, Leo was the first one from that range. His arm fell off. Their quality control is, you know, sort of notorious on those early figures. Raphael was probably the cheapest out of all the four of them because I had a, um, uh, I was able to accumulate enough credits or pennies, as they're called, with pop culture. Not only was it already discounted, but I got another $50 off, so yeah. Also with the, uh, I think the previous year's favorite and frustrating purchases video I did, I talked about the Dream X April O'Neil, or at least the uh, the cut down version that I bought here, the very, very cheap version that I bought here, which is missing the box and most of the accessories, which I didn't really need. Yeah, she fits right in with the 1.6 scale Mondo Turtles, like probably more so than the Dream X Turtles, which look, I don't mind the Dream X Turtles, they're, you know, they're, they're kind of cool, but they're not quite my cup of tea. I prefer the Eastman and Laird's original sort of inspired designs of, that the Mondo Turtles have gone with. I am contemplating yet another custom figure for this shelf. I'll go into that another time, but yeah. Then we go further down, and the bottom two shelves are actually dedicated to Doctor Who. Now, it's taken up two shelves. Because, yeah, there's quite a bit of stuff there. First of all, there's yet more 1 6 scale figures, especially in the Doctor Who range. Uh, we've got the figures from uh, 2006 or 2007. We've got various versions of the Doctor, Cyberman, Jadoon, Novice Haim, one of those cat nurses, remember? Uh, and Martha, Martha Jones. Oh, that's an absolute tragedy with that Martha Jones figure. I bought her mint in pack for like $20 from uh, Seller on Gumtree. Oh, that was, that was such a nice couple as well. Uh, wonderful to chat to. But yeah, mint in box. But I'm the type of person that likes to display loose if I, if I can. 
it had been in box for at least a decade. She's wearing a pleather jacket, and uh, yeah, over the course of that decade, that pleather had um, had fused with the blister packing she was packaged in, and when you pull it out, yeah, the jacket was ruined, and I was <laughs> sort of demo. However, I've also heard that's not unusual with any of the Martha figures, so I don't know, maybe I feel better. Martha Jones is one of my favourite companions, she's very underrated. Let's put it this way, she left on her own terms, I think is is a really good way to define her character. I do regret not getting these figures when they were going for cheap at uh, Toys R Us, um, you know, uh, 12 years ago. Back then they were getting rid of their Doctor Who stock for very, very cheap and, you know, I, I bought two Cybermen helmets, I, I at least had the presence of mind to do that, but I didn't buy the figures for some reason. Ugh, thought it might be best to come down here and actually have a look. Um, what was I up to? Oh yeah, the one six scale Doctor Who stuff. They're very much toys and I really, really like them. So along with the character options uh, toys, or dolls, because that's what they are, um, we've also got the high-end figures. In this case, Big Chief Studios. The Clara there is actually one I bought from Zing. I think it was like a end of year sale, after Christmas sale or something like that. She was half price, so that worked out for me. Along with Martha Jones, Clara is also uh, another favourite companion of mine. In the context of uh, being companion to the Twelfth Doctor, the Twelfth Doctor being my favourite incarnation of the Time Lord, there's something about the, the two of them that kind of works so well for me. If you notice, 12 there looks a little unfinished, and that's because he's not an actual Big Chief figure. He's a work in progress custom figure that I'm I'm in the process of putting together. The head sculpt is a legit Big Chief Studios head sculpt. I bought that from an eBay seller, funnily enough, who lived two suburbs away from me. This was one of the projects I was hoping to get started earlier in the year. I've, I've been collecting pieces um, for a while, and it's because the particular Big Chief figure 412, which is actually the, the maroon velvet uh, coat, was a very limited convention exclusive. And uh, yeah, when that one pops up, you'd be spending mm, quite a bit, cl like close to a thousand dollars sometimes. And yeah, that's not gonna happen. So I'm putting one together myself. Uh, so far, I think I've only spent hundred bucks yeah that includes uh, you know the clothes the body the stand I hope to actually uh, sew his maroon jacket I've got the materials I've even got a tiny little sewing machine that I want to use as well I've got his sonic screwdrivers I've got his sonic sunglasses as well I've even got the shrunken TARDIS um, that I ordered because yeah big chief we're getting rid of some excess stock as well for for very cheap bottom shelf all Doctor Who stuff, uh, predominantly 12 uh, related. So we've got various versions of 12, we've got uh, Clara as well, uh, we've got Missy, we've got plenty of screwdrivers, even including uh, 13 uh, Sonic screwdriver. Various Doctor Who bits and pieces, obviously not everything. There's some stuff in storage at the moment, including the various uh, voice changer helmets. No room for it here, but I have it. So one day, hopefully, I can display it somehow. Ooh. And back up here, and I left this till last because it's slightly different. I finally decided to bring these out of storage. I, I kept them really safe. These in-box figures, and it's one of the few reasons I keep anything in box. They're all signed by their respective voice actors. For me, most of what I enjoy about the convention experience is meeting some of the creators behind my favorite stories. But the ones that really kind of draw me in the most are voice actors. And whether it be for cartoons or video games, I just really appreciate their work. It was never a thing I set out to do. It just, I kind of realized that after the fact. Sometimes I buy an extra figure specifically to to do this, and sometimes I I keep things long enough in pack that by the time by the time the actor comes around, I have something for them to sign. So I've got uh, Veronica Taylor, who was the voice of the early 2000s April O'Neil. There, I actually dressed up as Leonardo to, uh, when I lined up to to get it signed by her. I've also got 
The Dr. Zoidberg from Futurama, signed by Billy West. He was lovely. He was lovely. Oh, speaking of lovely. Oh, the next one is Kate Diaz uh, from Gears of War 4. And that was signed by her voice actor, Laura Bailey. She and her husband, uh, Travis Willingham, were, were there together. And they also did photos together. And I actually got Travis to sign his figure, Spartan Fred from Halo 5. Because, yeah, he did a really good job on that one too. They are such sweethearts. Voice actors in general are just really, really nice. I mean, that's been my experience. Your mileage may vary. Yeah, so these have been in a storage box ever since they got signed. And... I make sure to get them personalized because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sell them. I really I really do want them for myself. I just thought finally after all this time they deserve a spot on display. These set of shelves is yet another work in progress uh, and also another custom build shelf as well. It's a mishmash of different things at the moment. Some working better than others. Some more a case of. That'll do for now until I can clear space elsewhere in the house. Yeah, it has a variety of different things. On top of here, it's actually the uh, the childhood T-Rex from Dino Riders that I found earlier in the year. Uh, the plan is to actually replace the one that I bought uh, last year with this one. Get the armor parts on the other one and put them on my original one. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a project for another time. This shelf here is well, I guess it's the childhood leftovers, uh, a smattering of stuff that I had as a kid, but doesn't quite fit elsewhere. Uh, let me count. I think only two or three of these pieces are actually from my childhood. Uh, the rest have been reacquired uh, after the fact in the last couple of years. We've got some Thomas the Tank Engine stuff. We've got a few. Uh, thumb wrestlers, WWF thumb wrestlers, Lion-O from Thundercats. That and the Sword of Omens were probably my only two Thundercats toys in total when I was a kid. That's actually something I still need to get a hold of. Sword of Omens, yeah. The McDonald's Transformer toys, which uh, I think they're called Changeables. I rediscovered two of my original uh, Changeables earlier in the year as well. Mr. T, I wasn't... I wasn't a fan of the A-Team growing up, but I knew Mr. T, and I even had this Mr. T toy, which uh, I discovered at Savers. He's incomplete, sadly, but you know what? For the price, he was enough for me. The uh, plush Leonardo is one of those sort of n near misses, near hits. Well, anyway, this is the size down from the one I had as a kid, and... Uh, yeah, I've actually got two of them now. <laughs> one I found recently, and this one I bought... A... Oh, I knocked something over. This one I bought uh, online a, a few years ago, kind of thinking it was the correct size, but then when I got it, I realised it wasn't. I was much smaller back then. <laughs> uh, but he's sitting here because there's not quite anywhere in the actual Ninja Turtles space to put him, but oh, I'll figure that out someday. And the last item on the childhood shelf is this crappy little remote-controlled robot that I probably had bought for me when I was three or four years old. It was, uh, if I recall, <laughs> and I barely recall, it was from one of those, um, uh, the very cheap bargain stores that you find at Chinatown sort of thing, with the really crappy knockoff toys and, and, and all the rest of that. I've got some very old toys, toys that are older than me in this collection, but that is my oldest toy, if you get my meaning. It's the it's the toy I've had the longest. The remote control, I call it a remote, it was wired. <laughs> That's been cut off. Uh, it's missing the arm that shoots out. It clearly doesn't work anymore, but I've still had it all these years, and I don't know, I thought I'd, I thought I'd keep it there. If we go a shelf down, we've got some VHS tapes. The ex-rental VHS tapes are over in the corner of the room now. And the, most of those are movies that uh, I I love, I enjoy, or at least find curious. The ones here kind of represent, well, my childhood. We've got the Ninja Turtles, we've got Transformers, we've got Dino Riders on VHS. And uh, maybe not quite childhood, but my teen years, we've got a, a, a set of... Beast Wars Transformers on VHS. Oh yeah, there's also Ghostbusters, I forgot that. Uh, one of these tapes is a reacquisition of a tape that I had as a kid and that I watched over and over and over and over. 
and over again. The uh, second season of Beast Wars was actually bought brand new back in the day. Apart from that, everything's been re everything's been acquired uh, recently, whether it be eBay auctions or you know for a dollar or two at Savers. Next shelf down, we have all that sorts of vintage jigsaw puzzles. I don't know, I, I went through a jigsaw puzzle phase at one point. Some people like to do crosswords, some people like to do Sudoku. Uh, once upon a time, I used to like doing jigsaw puzzles. I, I just thought it was a nice way to kind of, you know, focus and exercise my mind. My brain has turned to mush anyway, but you know. And then on the bottom shelf, we've got a whole bunch of mostly vintage uh, board games. That's a temporary idea at the moment because I've still got so many other board games in storage. This was this was something I was trying out. There's, there's some not so vintage stuff as well, like uh, like the Archer board game, which I'm kind of curious about. That that's a that's a sixty dollar board game that I found for five dollars at Savers. Again, most of this I'm trying out. Most of this I'm sort of you know let's let's see how we go. So. The good lounge room connects into the fancy dining room. The problem with that is that my nonsense uh, was starting to bleed into there. That made the dining room unusable, basically. And I needed to resolve that, which is why the Necker Turtles, as well as the set of shelves behind me, have been used to section off the two different rooms. Uh, and then I left the gap in the middle so that you can go between them quite easily. However, I'm all about efficiencies, and I thought to myself, I might still be able to put something there as long as I can easily remove it. And at one point, I was just going to put a folding table uh, right in the middle there, just mainly so I could put my stereo, my Bluetooth stereo on there. And then I remembered I had a spare cube unit, and all I needed was, you know, maybe a set of casters, and I could make this, you know, like... I could actually do something with whatever I put here. And so, yeah, I decided to have a space for some of the accessories that I I can't put onto this place. Here's a whole bunch of stuff that I haven't uh, sorted out yet. The Bluetooth stereo I found at Savers uh, actually uh, a month or two ago. I've bought a few different Bluetooth speakers over the time and and um, I keep getting better and better ones. This one used to retail for over $250. I bought it for 25 bucks and it is beautiful. Sometimes when I'm in here, you know, maybe relaxing, I want to listen to some music, listen to some podcasts maybe. Yeah, just I, I just thought I'd mention that bit of infrastructure as well. And I saved this one till last because, well, it's kind of special to me. It's what I call the Childhood Heroes Cabinet. Basically, it features the three fictional characters that inspired me or shaped me in some way growing up in the 80s and 90s. I mean, it's so special to me. It's the only cabinet in the collection that is protected by clear perspex. Yeah, and, and on that... Uh, uh, yeah, I did this myself. This is a standard bookcase that I got from Cheapest Chips many years ago uh, because I just like the colour. I got some clear sheets from Bunnings that I just cut up and I added rare earth magnets to, to the cabinet. Yeah, works rather well. It's more about minimising dust than sort of keeping 100% dust out, but it served me well so far. Starting off, we have Optimus Prime, of course. We've got the various incarnations of Optimus over the years. Of course, the Fall of Cybertron, War for Cybertron uh, versions are in there. Masterpiece, the MP... Technically, it's the MP4 because it had came with the trailer. Oh, that was from Target, of all places, back in the day when Target was getting in really good collectibles. We've also got the more recent Earthrise Optimus Prime, which is a really good figure with a mediocre trailer and was originally way overpriced. That's mildly frustrating, but I wasn't angry at it. I'm still not angry at it, um, I guess, because, you know, it was one of the first things I purchased after kind of lockdown ended. We've got the Bumblebee movie version of Optimus Prime, which is actually really cool. Again, it's one of those frustrating things because you look at that and you go, where the hell was that in 2007? We've got the Transformers Prime, 
Uh, and of course, <laughs> leaving things to last, uh, we've got the original Generation 1 Prime. That is my original G1 Prime as well. It's the exact one I've kept from when I was a kid. He's got his trailer. He's, he's not complete. I had to I had to find bits and pieces after the fact. And a friend actually gifted me uh, a new set of repro labels because mine were mine are peeling off. Strange thing is, I haven't brought myself to apply those repro labels yet. Uh, the friend, uh, the friend who actually gave them to me, uh, they passed away a few years ago, and it's taken me this long to to decide whether or not I want to I want to do that. I'll get there. Next shelf down, we have Leonardo from the Ninja Turtles. My original Leonardo toy from when I was a kid. I used to play with the wacky wind-up versions, but I did have a standard version of Leo, and that is my childhood one right there. The one I have in the uh, actual Ninja Turtles display was the one that the, uh, the my friend Carl actually gave to me. My friend Alistair actually g uh, gave me the, uh, the giant samurai turtle there as well. He had it in his storage for a while and he was getting rid of it. You know me, I love the, the third Ninja Turtles movie so I was happy to have that one. Giant movie star turtle there, 13 inch one. Still ugly as all hell. But you know what? When you when you find a bargain, you you go for it. It's one of the few instances of having the Nickelodeon turtle in there as well, because I actually like those toys. Uh, I'm I'm all right about the the TV series. It got there. I, I really really like those toys. They yeah. At some point, Playmates gave up on doing the sort of uh, predetermined squash down action poses. Uh, actually, that came with the 2007 movie. Oh, and that Leonardo shampoo bottle. That is my original one from childhood as well. <laughs> so after the 80s, when I was introduced to Star Trek The Next Generation in... Was it 91? Yeah. Captain Picard instantly became my favourite character from that series. So various versions of Captain Picard there, including Diamond Select figures, Playmates figures... Uh, the McFarlane figure is a bit so-so. I've also got, uh, thanks to Eagle Moss, three representations of Captain Picard's uh, ships, the, the vessels that he commanded. So we've got the Stargazer, we've got the Enterprise D, and as, as well as the Enterprise E. We've also got the Playmates large figures, the nine-inch ones that are kind of Mego-esque, but these are really nice, as well as the 30 centimeter, 12-inch figures, which I've got to admit, for toys that came out in 1997 their likeness to Patrick Stewart is really really good and of course we've got the quantum mechanics uh, one six scale Captain Picard which is absolutely stunning now I'll admit that head sculpt the photos don't do it justice you kind of have to there are certain angles certain lighting that work best for it and, and then it's only in real life that it kind of works for you. It had to grow on me. But yeah, there is something absolutely beautiful about that 1-6 scale figure. The uniform, the details, the accessories. I'm quite enamored by it. And sort of think, you know what? As, as good as Hot Toys are, yeah, some of these other companies like QMX really don't get enough of a look in when it comes to their 1-6 scale range. Popping up to the top here, and we've got a few more Optimus Prime pieces. Uh, in the Transformers video, I showed off the giant Megatron that I had. Well, that was an absolute bargain from Gumtree. Of course, I've got the matching Optimus Prime. He was actually the first one I bought. I will admit, it was... I had my eye on him at one point, was kind of, you know, d trying to decide whether or not I wanted one, and then and then I'll, I must credit Michael Mercy's video. Uh, he, he did a review on it, but it, which which absolutely sold me on that toy. Now, he's not transformable, and people will look at that and kind of, you know, thumb their noses at it, because a Transformers toy that doesn't transform, and to that I say, to hell with you. If you can't appreciate a really cool robot toy, eh, I don't want anything to do with you. When I look at that toy, I see Optimus Prime. For me, I picture the robots more so than their vehicle modes. And that's what Optimus has always looked like to me. But in any case, I've also got a knockoff uh, War for Cybertron figure. It's one of those oversized knockoffs. They, they, they take the original toy and they just make larger versions of it. I've always wanted one for ages. Finally found it, and it's a terrible toy, but I'm still glad I've got it. And one of the more recent 
acquisitions is this voice changer helmet vintage voice changer helmet from give me a second I really should check these things beforehand this is from 1984 and uh, I gotta admit I never knew this existed until I spotted it on eBay and it still works it's only missing the the battery cover here I have an affinity for headwear masks and uh, and helmets of various sorts and yeah when I spotted that for going as low as it was I kind of leapt on it thought I'd display it up here along with uh, a few mementos of my meeting with uh, the legendary Peter Cullen the voice of the original Optimus Prime the newspaper clipping was the reason for our photo shoot also the signed photo that of myself and Sean and Peter Cullen sits pride of place up there Hopefully the camera can pick this up, but this is what the toy room looks like without the uh, overly bright studio lighting that I normally like to use with my videos and my photography. Uh, it's alright, um, you know, <laughs> in real life it, it's actually really bright in here anyway. We've got a few bulbs being used in each chandelier. Remember, good lounge room. But yeah, it's nice and bright, I can see a lot in here, but with the way the lights are placed, many of the shelves are quite dark and so yeah it kind of uh, it kind of spoils for me anyway it kind of spoils things in trying to appreciate the toys so as you already know if you've been watching my videos I've got these LED lights in them and yeah look I love how bright it is I love how I can see everything uh, yeah, right up until the back but sometimes when I come into this room I just want to relax uh, which is you know, part of the reason why a room like this exists. Uh, I, and so I don't really need all the lights in here. Uh, I, as I said, in real life, it actually looks really bright in here. So I want to create a, a slightly more soothing atmosphere in here. And so, I, you know, turn off the chandeliers and just leave the cabinets on. And that's actually really nice. It's, uh, you know, like you bask in the glow of all the shelves. However, that leaves the top of the cabinets unlit and it's quite jarring to have all the shelves lit and this black mass on top of them because there's a lot of great stuff to be seen on top of these shelves so i decided to rig up some some down lights uh, originally i was looking into various different things like actual down lights uh, spotlights I was even looking into just putting LED strips on top of the shelves. Uh, then I remembered I had a set of puck lights. These are specifically Arlick brand. I bought them from Bunnings out of curiosity. And uh, and then I found another pack, a, an older model, which was in the bargain bin somewhere. Yeah, I decided I could use these. They're, they're a, a good tone. They're nice and soft. Uh, they're easy to wire up. Yeah, they create a really, a really nice mood. I don't need everything on top of the shelves lit up properly. I just need enough lighting up there to avoid it being a jarring black mass of nothingness when I'm sitting in here. And I always wanted to avoid having this collection be, you know, a bit up itself or a little bit too pretentious. But quite honestly, I crossed that line ages ago. So uh, whatever. If it looks more like a museum display, then I'm all for it now. <laughs>
It still boggles my mind that people kept asking for years for a closer look at my collection, flattering as it is. This was even back when it was just two bookcases in the corner of my room. You know, all that time I, I kind of resisted doing a standard you know, tour, here's my collection video, which ironically is what this final video turned out to be, I guess. So early in the year when it came time for my uh, biannual reorganizing of this collection, I thought that was a much more interesting premise to go by because it wasn't just me talking about the collection itself, it was also about, well, how and why I like to display these things. It's taken a lot longer than it should have. Normally reorganizing takes a month or two for me, but what with 2020 being what it is, uh, as well as sort of planning each section out and recording it for the channel, it's uh, it's taken a lot longer to do. Uh, however, it's also given me something to focus on in this very strange year. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've, I've actually enjoyed it as a long-term project. I'm really proud of how everything has turned out, how everything's looking. Um, you know, it's, it's not quite 100% where I was originally planning it. I, I had to do a few changes along the way. Um, it's still missing a few sections that I was hoping to have, make room for. Actually, I was sort of thinking about putting my uh, one of my old poker tables in here as well. Uh, yeah, back in the day I used to build poker tables for fun. That was when everyone was obsessed with Texas Hold'em. I still might do that at some point, but for now I'm just enjoying all the empty space, all the, uh, all the empty floor space here. <laughs> part of the fun of having toys at my age, uh, part of the play, I guess you could call it, is the curating of the collection. Oh god, that sounds that sounds all hoity-toity, doesn't it? It's not just the hunt, it's not just the tracking down, it's not just the the randomness or the surprise of, you know, going to markets. It's also finding ways to, you know, show off these collections and and also, you know, I, I might even swap out um, some of these shelves. Halfway through next year, I might, on a whim, decide to finally bring out uh, the Wallace and Gromit stuff uh, and put them on display. But that's part of the fun, that's part of the play of, of, of uh, collecting as, as I spiral towards, you know, 40. But like I said, I'm, I'm very pleased with how this has turned out. It's been really fun and I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the views. Thank you so much for the comments. Uh, I really do appreciate that. It's nice to kind of be able to share some of these things with, with everyone. And if you have been enjoying these videos or any of my work really, then you know remember all the usual stuff, like, share, and subscribe. And if you really enjoy them, then please consider contributing to my tip jar at ko-fi.com slash old trenchy. Uh, there's gonna be more along the way, especially in the new year. We'll, uh, I've, got, I've got a few more plans. But in the meantime, I'm just going to kick back and relax and bask in all this, take it all in and enjoy it. Ugh. Ugh. Those LED lights look like they need replacing. Ugh. This is alright. I haven't actually been able to do this in here for a while. I like those shelves, they're really cool. Maybe I want to rearrange them all over again. God damn it!